Alright, a uh, quick video here demonstrating that dynamic branching does work using a custom node. Uh, contrary to what some people seem to believe, um, when this is green, it's using a cheap version of the material, well, in this case, just color. And when it's red, it's using a complex version that I think is pulling somewhere around, I don't know, 2,000 instructions, I would say. And as you can see, it's going to oscillate back and forth between them. Uh, highs of around 85, lows of around, hang on, it'll say in just a second, lows of around 69. So it's going to oscillate between those back and forth. Um, and it's pretty easy to pull this off. Um, so I just have a simple cube. This cube has just uh, got a timer that's uh, set to looping every 10 seconds and it'll just switch between 1 and 0 for the uh, the conditional and the actual material. Within the material uh, you can ignore all this other crap. I just simplified this down a little bit because it was taking like 45 minutes to compile a shader and I'm just not trying to deal with that for a simple experiment here. Uh, it's just a random arbitrary BS uh, function here. I mean, literally, it's only ever going to return one absolute world position minus camera position, and then get the vector length, and then divide that by pixel depth. That's pretty much only going to ever return you one. Uh, this wall of transforms is just going from uh, it's simulating, helping simulate uh, more complexity to the material. It's just going from absolute world to local to absolute to local back and forth like 600 times. I don't remember how many it is. It's a big ass wall though. And then it comes down into a custom node. This is just a custom uh, branch. It says if you know A is greater than or equal to B, return A. If not, return B. So or the through A or through B. And I just got you know colors attached to those. So and then this variable here is uh, the one that the blueprints are driving. So um, then I made a copy of that material. It's identical in the same equations and all, but it's using an if instead, which will not uh, dynamically branch. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the material over to the if version of it just to show what I mean that it does not dynamically branch. I'm going to have to wait for this shader to compile real quick. It's uh, Hopefully it won't take too long because that's uh, kind of annoying when it does, but you'll still be able to see it happen in here regardless of if it compiles in time or not. You'll see the frame rate doesn't budge. It's sitting at like 103 or 5 or whatever it is. Uh, that'll change. It'll drop a little bit once it's done compiling. All right, there we go. Done compiling. It's sitting at 85 FPS or milliseconds and it's still sitting at the same same thing and it's just going to stay there it's not going to switch uh, it's not going to drop at all because it's computing both inputs of the uh, of the if it's going to compute all of it so which is flattening versus branching and this does support branching it's using you know a high level shader language which it, it, this is shader model 5 you have the ability to branch you know if it's HLSL then you have the ability to branch and anybody that's trying to argue that it doesn't have branching is well in my opinion an idiot but I'm not going to go that far and call somebody an idiot because they might be knowledgeable in some other areas that I might not be so um, but just switching the material back just to prove this uh, this point. It doesn't have to compile a shader, it's already done. I think. And normally it would say in the corner. So it's sitting at 100 milliseconds and then it dips down to 72, 71, 69. And I'll wait for it to go back up one more time and it shoots up to 85 so same thing it works 
so quit arguing that it doesn't.